YouTube, what is up? It's AD with US Squads. I hope you're having a kick-ass day. Alright, I'm going to do a how-to video and show you guys how to replace the Remittance Factory Trigger. Uh, today we'll be using a aftermarket trigger, the Timney Calvin Elite uh, trigger. Uh, adjustable from 8 ounces to 2.5 pounds. And we're doing this because of the recall uh, that rifle that is a Remington 700 chambered in 338 Lapua. That rifle serial numbers are pegged as a recall uh, rifle, which basically the recall is to recall their factory uh, trigger, their Xmark Pro trigger. And they basically giving me a big F you telling me, sorry, your really expensive rifle has a faulty trigger uh, that could potentially disfire, uh, misfire and, and, sh and kill somebody. So uh, do us a favor and mail in your really nice rifle um, for un um, undisclosed amount of time while we try to figure out how to fix millions and millions of recalls uh, in a short amount of time, which is insane. So I'm going to show you guys how to do it yourself. Uh, this trigger, uh, I'll put a link to the unbox video of this trigger so you can get the details of it if you have an interest. But this is basically a competition trigger for a benchmark rifle. Um, I am a multi-use shooter, so this will be... Uh, I actually packed that exact rifle, uh, almost, I'm sorry, uh, without that chassis. I have another chassis for it. But I actually packed that rifle uh, 22 miles last year and hauled out three elk quarters. So I ain't scared to carry a big-ass rifle in the mountains, tell you what. So, uh, let's get started. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to make our rifle safe and we're going to remove the bolt and the magazine. Uh, every firearm on my videos are, are always safety checked prior to the video, but you know what? If I don't say something, somebody on the thread has a mini cow about things. So, we're going to make sure our weapons are safe, magazines are out. I'm going to actually take off these optics here. I'm going to take them off. I'm going to take out the chassis and when I come back I'm going to show you what the rifle looks like without the chassis and the scope and that way we can get to the trigger trigger and all right YouTube my rifle's taken apart only took a minute and what we have here is the chassis the optics magazine and the bolt so what I have left over is basically the old trigger that's attached to the action which is attached to the barrel and that's okay. We're pretty good at where we're at now. So the tools we'll need for this task, um, I have this dense foam pad to help us out with uh, not banging our, uh, our receiver up too much, our, our upper. Um, we're going to have two punches. We're going to have a very thin punch and a thicker punch. Um, one's going to be to punch the pins through. The other one's going to set the pins when I want to put them back in. Okay, because I don't want to go all the way through. I want them to be flush with each side once we punch them back in. Have a very small brass hammer. And that's it. And then, of course, we're going to have our upgraded new Uber trigger. Okay. Now that we got our tools in check, we're going to punch out our pins. We're going to take our small punch. And I'm going to give you an example. Pin one. Move the safety selector to the rear or to safe, you're going to expose pin 2. Pin 1, pin 2. Right side, left side. As you're, as, pretend you're holding your rifle and you're looking down the sights, this is your right side and then the other side will be your left side. So now that we got orientation set, what we're going to do is we're going to punch our pin 1 from our left out toward the right. Okay, does that make sense? Uh, on this other side, you'll be able to see the pin. We're going to punch it left out to our right. Now, here's the trick. On the rear pin, our pin number two, we're going to punch that right to our left. And I'm going to tell you why we do that. And we're not going to punch, and uh, another note is on the rear pin, we will not punch it all the way out. Pin one, front pin, we're going to punch it all the way out. Pin two, we're going to punch it but we're not going to punch it all the way out. We're actually going to stop and make sure it doesn't go all the way out because the bolt release right here on the left side, we want to leave the pin in there so this doesn't get all 
fall out and we have all sorts of weird issues trying to figure out where these springs go. So as you can see right here is where I'm going to punch out pin one. Pin two, we're going to punch it out from the other side. So let's start by punching out pin one. As you can see, I flipped my rifle on the other side, so I'm actually looking at the left side. And like I said, I'm going to punch pin one left to right. So we're going to just give it a couple love taps, and it's starting to punch out right now. And pin one is going to be out in just a second. Okay, pin one is out. All right, now what we're gonna do, and it's actually not out, out, like usually this pops out, but shit, I don't have to guide it back in, so it's fine. So it's gonna be fine there. I can punch it all the way out, or it can be out enough for this trigger to move up and down. So now it's time to punch the rear pin out, and remember, we're gonna punch from the right side to the left, but we're gonna use, we're gonna be a little, we're gonna use a little bit more finesse on this particular operation because I do not want to punch this pin all the way out. So I'm just going to go and it's going to start starting to go already. Okay, I could feel that it went really fast there and I don't want to punch it all the way out again, right? There, there we go. It's not all the way out, but watch now. Now the trigger is going to just pull out from the bottom. And it's almost out. Okay. All right. So as you can see with my hand, I kept this in check so it's not all the way out. That way my um, bolt release is not going to be jacked. And there it is. That's the factory trigger, which stamped steel whatever it's got all sorts of stuff going on here okay okay so that is enough of that we're gonna take our Timney trigger and we're gonna get this prep to put install so uh, I like to put the rear pin in first and I'm gonna do something a little different I'm actually gonna take out this pilot pin that's in there and that pilot pin actually holds it actually holds this uh, bar in this top bar here um, it's fine you can it's not that hard so basically I'm gonna punch it out and once I punch it out it's gonna kinda float in here and just give you a little orientation tip is this hole matches that and you see how this is hooked downwards that's how it's supposed to be. So if you get it confused and you try to install it like this with the hook going upwards, that's not good. Okay? Downward and on. Okay? So that's what we're going to do. We're, we're going to do that right now. And I, it's going to take a little bit of finesse to make sure that all these parts go on just right, but it's okay. So I'm going to start with the rear pin and I'm just going to line this up and insert the trigger into the rear okay once I do that and I can see that they're close to a line I'm just gonna simply see I can see that that's pretty aligned I'm gonna start punching oh I'm sorry I am holding this top bar in with my hand in fact you can remove the top bar if you'd like it's not really you don't even have to fiddle with it but just remember the orientation of it okay so I personally don't care for the pilot pin causes more problems for me so now that I have it pretty lined up I'm just gonna grab my little little hammer here and kinda just ease it in there I'm gonna grab the larger punch just give it a tap it's not aligned quite perfectly so I'm just gonna make sure it's aligned and just tap it till it feeds all the way through which it's pretty much there and this is again the reason I have the foam pad so I don't scratch all this stuff up and I can get after uh, get after this pin so just bear with me while I tap it in and I'm just gonna tap it till it's flush like so 
pretty happy with that. That's flush, and that's good. All right, now I'm going to work on the um, the front pin, pin number one. And I'm going to put my bar back in. Remember, I'm going to pay attention. I'm going to make sure that hook is pointed down toward the rear of the trigger. The rear of the trigger. I'm going to line it up like so. Give it a little tap. And it's going to take a little finesse to get this lined up, but... So for me, it's easier to remove that um, that lead bar or this little bar. Um, for others, it might be easier. I don't mind taking a little time to guide it through and make sure it's right. So um, now that we got it set up correctly, I'm just going to work it in here. So we're almost there. And then I want to punch it through till I see it on this side here. So it's almost there. It's got to go in a little bit more. Use a smaller punch. I'm going to actually use my brass punch here so I don't mar the finish. Although this is their extreme finish here, so it should be pretty good. about where I want it. We don't want too much, when we punch this pin through, we don't want too much tension on that bar. Um, we want it to be able to move freely up and down. That's our, basically our bolt release. So I'm just gonna make sure I punch it out a little, give it a little flexibility. All right, we're good. So you saw kind of what we needed to do there. So basically I can take my bolt at this point, put it in there, lock it down and now the trigger should engage. So let's give it a whirl and make sure it does what it's supposed to do. Ooh, 8 ounces. Uh, by the way, the factory on this Calvary is set at 8 ounces, so it's going to be ultra light. I do like it though. So we're going to use the little trigger gauge, give it a little pull, and that is set at 8 ounces. Okay, so um, I can sit here with a key, out, out, uh, a little Allen key in the bottom here and make my adjustments. Um, clockwise, clockwise lightens trigger pull, counterclockwise loosens it up or uh, gives us a heavier trigger pull, I'm sorry. so. That is pretty much it. So a few things to note. Uh, you can go ahead and make your adjustments now and use a trigger pull gauge to find out where you want to be. Eight ounces to two and a half pounds is pretty much where, you, where you're going to be. That's eight ounces. So I'm going to grab an Allen key, tighten this up. I'm going to put the rifle back together and show you guys what it looks like. But all in all, this trigger is installed. It's pretty much done. Here's your old trigger, which looks pretty junky compared to that uh, Timney trigger. And uh, that's it. Thanks, guys. We'll uh, be back with the rifle put back together in just a second. I'm going to actually spend some time and clean it up real nicely now that we have it taken apart. So we'll make sure it's clean in there.